Hello, David Diga Hernandez here, and you're watching Spirit Church on Encounter TV. On this edition of Spirit Church, I'm talking about the ranks of hell. I believe that as you better understand your enemy, you'll be better positioned to defeat that enemy. And we're going to take a look at the structures and the rankings of hell. The scripture gives us very detailed information on this very topic. Stephen Moctezuma is here with me as usual. He's gonna lead you in some worship and then we're gonna get into this lesson, the ranks of hell. Here's Stephen Moctezuma. I may be weak, but your spirit strong in me. My flesh may fail, but my God, you never will. I may be weak, but your spirit is strong in me. My flesh may fail, but my God, you never will. I may be weak, but your spirit is strong in me. My flesh may fail. My God, you never will. I may be weak, but your spirit strong in me. My flesh may fail. My God, you never will. Give me faith to trust what you say. That you're good and your love is great. I'm broken inside, I give you my life, oh, my life, give me faith to trust what you say, that you're good and your love is great, I'm broken inside. I give you my life, oh my life. Give me faith, give me faith to trust what you say. That you're good and your love is great. I'm broken inside. I give you my life. Yeah, I give you my life, oh Lord. I give you my life, yeah, yeah, I give you my life, yeah, I give you all The Bible gives us clear insight into the rankings of hell, but it gives us even clearer insight into who ultimately rules all things. The Bible says this in Ephesians chapter 1, beginning at verse number 19. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. The book of Ephesians begins this first chapter by telling us of the ultimate sovereignty of Christ. Now there are some believers who are afraid to get into topics regarding demonic beings or hell or spiritual warfare because they're superstitious in their approach. They're afraid that if they talk about demons that that opens a door. They're afraid if they read scriptures on demonic beings that opens a spiritual door. I've heard of people who walk into stores and they're so afraid of having a demonic being attached to them that they're constantly praying in paranoia against any demonic being that might potentially attach itself to them simply by touching an item that was shipped from another country where they believe more demonic beings may come from. But the truth is that the believer is not to fear demonic beings 
simply because we are the body of Christ, Christ is our head, and He is over all things. He is the ultimate sovereignty. He's the ultimate ruler. He is God. He rules it all. Make no mistake, demonic beings are powerful, and we are not to be frivolous in our approach to spiritual warfare. We're not to be casual or laid back with our approach to spiritual warfare. We are to approach spiritual warfare filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered by the word and authority of Christ, and we're to approach it with a sort of reverence, but we are not to fear demonic beings. You have the power over every demonic being that would ever try to attack you. You have more power in your body because your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. There's more power in my hand than in all of the power of hell combined. And the same goes for you. The Holy Spirit who raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. The scripture says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And demonic beings certainly do dwell upon the earth as we take a look at from last week's teaching on the origin of demonic beings. So we talked about the fall of Satan. We talked about the origin of demons or the origins of demonic beings. And now we're looking at the ranks of hell. But I wanted to begin this lesson by making it absolutely clear that in no way are we to become superstitious and fearful of demonic beings. In fact, I pray that you become emboldened as you hear these teachings to know that you are filled with the authority of Christ and that no demon in hell has any power over you. He is, Christ Jesus himself, the ruler over all things. He fills everything with himself. Now, this is not to say that demonic beings don't have some form of influence. In fact, the scripture says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 2, this is the next chapter, the scripture says this, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Now you notice there's a distinction here between what we read in Ephesians chapter 1 verses 19 through 23 and Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. In Ephesians chapter 1, we read of Christ's rule, which is ultimate, it's sovereign, and it's over all things. But then in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2, we still see that demonic beings and the devil and the kingdom of hell have a rank over those who walk in disobedience. And those who walk in disobedience are subject to the dominion of Satan. So Satan, to some capacity, has rule in the subdominion of earth. So Satan rules the power of the air. The power of the air is not a, it's not a description of Satan. The power of the air is a description of his domain. So Satan is the prince of the power of the air, not the prince and the power of the air. That's a common misconception or that's a common, commonly misquoted scripture where people will say that Satan is the prince and the power of the air. But Satan is not the prince and the power. He's the prince of the power. And the power of the air is that influence, is that space, is that geographic location, if you will. Now, Satan may be the prince of the power of the air, but Jesus is the ruler of heavenly realms. So that's the distinction being made in Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 2. But still, as I said earlier, this does not mean that demonic beings or Satan do not have some type of influence or some type of dominion in the earth. In fact, the scripture describes in Genesis chapter 1 that in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, when I read that, I thought that was interesting. God created the heavens and the earth. It was plural. You know, the scripture describes three heavens. Paul, the apostle himself said that speaking of, you know, a vision he had, or as he would say, I don't know it was a vision, if it was a vision, or I don't know if it was a dream, that I was caught up into, or this man was caught up into the third heaven, which we know, I believe, Paul the apostle was talking about himself. He says that a man was caught up into a third heaven. And this third heaven is that dwelling place of God. So there's the earth's atmosphere or the sky. You can find this in Genesis chapter 6, verse 7, Psalm chapter 8, verse 8, and James chapter 5, verse 18. The earth's atmosphere being described as the heaven. So the firmament or the sky can be one type of heaven. Then there's the second heaven, 
which is the cosmos. This is the sun, the moon, the stars, the universe as we know it. Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 2, and Psalm chapter 8, verses 3 through 4 describe the cosmos. And then there is God's dwelling place, Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14, and 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. So the scripture talks about these three heavens. There's number one, the heavens which describe the firmament or the sky or the dominion of earth. Number two, there's the heavens that describe the cosmos. And number three, there's the heavens that describe that different dimension, the spiritual realm, the metaphysical reality, which is God's dwelling place. And this is the place we go when we are caught up to be with Him or when we are passing through from this life to the next, we're caught up into that third heaven, into the dwelling place of God. Now, Satan has influence in this subdominion of earth. Satan has influence in the firmament or the first heaven. So man has surrendered, as we read of the scripture in Genesis and I taught in the fall of Satan on a different video, that man gave his dominion through disobedience and rebellion. So the only reason that Satan even has any influence in the first place in this sub-dominion of earth or the first heaven is because man surrendered that dominion through his disobedience. So we regain our dominion over the enemy when we leave the kingdom of darkness and walk into the freedom that Christ has given us. When we come over to Christ, the scripture describes us as having been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. So we leave Satan's dominion, and when we accept Christ, when we are washed in the blood, when we're transformed, when we receive our new nature, we become rulers over demonic beings. We have the power, we have the authority, we have all the backing of heaven against all the kingdom of darkness. We have authority and dominion when we are in Christ. When we're in Christ, the scripture says we're seated with him in heavenly places. And when we're seated with him in heavenly places, that overthrows the power of the enemy in our life. Why? Because Satan only has rule over the power of the air, the first heaven. But when we're in Christ, we stand in proxy with Jesus and he vicariously rules and commands the forces of darkness through our being. We become the dominion of God in the earth. We become representatives, ambassadors of heaven when we are in Christ and we are rulers in heavenly places, which outranks the enemy's power of the air. We regain our authority. We regain our dominion. The devil has that power usurped from him. We take it back by force when we come into the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus. So we have to realize that though the enemy does have dominion, that ultimately Christ rules and we rule with him through him. And therefore, when we are in Christ, we take power over the power of the air because we're seated in a higher ranking heavenly places. Now, let's take a look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, because we just saw here that we ultimately have rule over the enemy. But I want to now take a look sp specifically at the rankings of hell. So let's go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. It's a very short verse, but it's very key. The scripture says this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places, principalities, powers, rulers of darkness in this world, and spiritual wickedness in high places. So number one, let's look at principalities. Now, there is a common misconception about principalities being taught, and many believe and many teach that a principality is a strong demon. I don't know how many times I've gone to pray for someone and they'll say, well, I believe this demon I'm battling is a principality. Now, there's a subtle distinction between what a principality demon actually does and actually is, but I'm going to try to clear up the terminology here for you. Principality is not a demon. A principality is a region ruled by a demon. And a demon in charge of a principality is a prince. Princes rule principalities. 
So that subtle distinction I just mentioned. It's important to make this subtle distinction and understand this subtle distinction, otherwise you'll miss what the scripture is giving us. You'll miss the information. If you categorize a principality as a personal being, then you completely do away with the idea that Ephesians is portraying to us that demonic beings organize according to geography, that they organize according to regions. Daniel chapter 10 verse 13 says this, For 21 days the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me, and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now this is very interesting because we see in the book of Daniel that a prince demon is very specifically, very obviously mentioned. This is not just exciting or intriguing, thought-provoking, philosophical musing. This is actual Bible. Demons can be ranked all the way to prince. This means because Satan is called the prince of the power of the air, that Satan is the prince of princes. However, this pales in comparison to Jesus, who is king of kings. So while the enemy is overseeing a kingdom of princes, Christ himself oversees a kingdom of kings. We are higher ranking. We are more powerful. We have better, I mean, you think about this, only a third of the angels went with Satan when he fell. We have two-thirds of those angels with us. We have God Himself with us. We have Michael, the archangel. We have Gabriel, the archangel. We have the Holy Spirit. And we have praying saints. And we have cherubims and seraphims. And that's a whole different lesson for a whole different time. But we must come to recognize that there are more with us than against us. And really all we need is the Lord. But this is powerful because we see into the kingdom of darkness. We have that veil removed so that we can look clearly upon what we're dealing with. And what we're dealing with is an organized kingdom. Satan is the overseer of prince demons. And prince demons oversee regions. In fact, we see from the scripture not only that demons are ranked very specifically by princes, but we see very specifically that demonic beings rule regions that correlate with actual geography within the earth. Think about it. The scripture says this. I mean, look at the verse again. And I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. In other words, a prince demon that was appointed to Persia. So hell appoints demonic princes to rule regions that correlate with actual nations. I believe that there is a prince demon over the United States of America. And whatever nation you may live in, whether or not you have what hell might call a prince demon, we all have ranked demons in the regions. So maybe hell doesn't exactly correlate its structure with our geographic locations and our actual nation borders, but that doesn't mean that they're not ranked. So hell has prince demons. So the principality is a region. So we know that Prince demons rule regions, and those spiritual regions correlate with earthly regions, and these regions are called principalities. So a principality is not a strong demon. A principality is a region ruled by a prince demon. Now on to the second, powers. Principalities, powers. We have the context setting verse here. We just read it. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Let's read it again. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Power is that sphere of influence or the chain of command or the overall structure. You talk about the powers that be. We say that term all the time, the powers that be. That term, the powers that be, is a description of a governmental ruling or a structured system of ruling that puts us in, uh, as subjects to it. So this term powers is talking about the overall structure of hell. So the principality is the, the, the actual region. The power is the system. So this is not a personal being. 
The power is the chain of command. Again, the principality is the region, the power is the system. So principalities and powers are not personal demonic beings. It's a description of the ranks and the regions. Powers is the ranks, principalities is the regions. Remember that. Principalities and powers, the ranks and the regions. Now we go into the personal beings where the scripture says that they're rulers and wickedness. So again, the powers, that is the overall system of hell. And the principality is the region ruled by certain demons. And the rulers of darkness in this world are demonic beings. Now remember that the scripture tells us that these demonic beings are ranked. So spiritual wickedness in high places could be referring to demonic beings with high authority. In other words, the darkness that is in the earth could be demons or for lack of a better term, the infantry. And spiritual wickedness in high places can be referring to those demons that are ranked in higher places. They're, they're, they're like the generals or the lieutenants of the kingdom of hell. Now, I don't know specifically how it's all ranked, but we do know that there is Satan, who even Jesus said was the ruler of the kingdom of darkness because he said a house divided against itself cannot stand. In that context, Jesus names Satan as the ruler. And then under him are his prince demons that rule over regions. And it only stands to reason that those demons are therefore broken down into lower ranks. So these demons could be the darkness in the earth and the spiritual wickedness in high places could be the ranked demons. Now, another thought on spiritual wickedness in high places, because we talked about the difference between demons and fallen angels in the last spirit church. Spiritual wickedness in high places could actually be fallen angels. In other words, demons might be the ground troops and fallen angels could be the air support. Somebody on the comment section on the last week's video asked about whether or not all of the angels had fallen into that second sin and are therefore now chained. Well, I don't believe that all of those fallen angels were participants in that second sin because we know that Satan is roaming the earth because the Bible warns us to watch out for him. But whatever you may believe about the spiritual wickedness in high places, there's no doubt that there's a certain ranking to it. So we know principality, the region, powers, the ranks, or the system, the overall structure. The darkness in the earth could be demonic beings, and the spiritual wickedness in high places could be those ranked demons or fallen angels. Now, demons are further broken down. Let's look again at that context in Daniel, Daniel chapter 12 now. Uh, and then we're also going to go to verse 13. Then he said, Don't be afraid, Daniel, since the first day you began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before your God, your request has been heard in heaven. And that's talking about God's dwelling place. I have come to answer your prayer. But for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me. And I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. So again, these princes represent regions, but they could also be that spiritual wickedness in high places. The Bible gives us even more detail into how demons are ranked. Mark chapter 9, verses 20 through 29 says this. So they brought the boy, but when the evil spirit saw Jesus, it threw the child into a violent convulsion, and he fell to the ground writhing and foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening? Jesus asked the boy's father. He replied, since he was a little boy. The spirit often throws him into the fire or into water, trying to kill him. Have mercy on us and help us if you can. What do you mean, if I can? Jesus asked. Anything is possible if a person believes. The father instantly cried out, I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw the crowd of onlookers was growing, he rebuked the evil spirit. Listen, you spirit that makes this boy unable to hear and speak, he said. I command you to come out of this child and never enter him again. Then the spirit screamed and threw the boy into another violent convulsion and left him. The boy appeared to be dead. A murmur ran through the crowd as people said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and helped him to his feet and he stood up. Afterward, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, they asked him, why couldn't we cast out that evil spirit? Jesus replied, this kind can only be cast out by prayer, 
Some versions say by prayer and fasting. So here, the disciples find themselves confronting a very powerful demonic being. This demonic being was so powerful that the disciples, who had previously been able to expel certain demons, were not able to cast this demon out of the boy. This demon resisted the commands of the disciples of Christ. Jesus arrives on the scene. The father is desperate. The boy is demon-possessed. The disciples are confused. Jesus commands this demon to go out. It leaves the boy. And then the disciples, later bewildered, ask Jesus, Lord, why were we unable to cast this demon out? And Jesus very clearly tells them that this kind can only be cast out through prayer. And again, some versions of the Bible say prayer and fasting. So not only are there powers and principalities and darkness in the world and spiritual wickedness in high places and prince demons and the king of darkness, which is Satan, not only is it broken down that, but it's further broken down among the ranks of hell by different kinds. And by kinds, Jesus is not speaking categorically. Jesus is speaking in level of power. He said this kind, which is basically this powerful, can only be cast out through prayer and fasting. In other words, this one is a bit stronger, or possibly this one is a lot stronger. Either way, Jesus is giving a description of a demon who has unusual strength in comparison to the other demons ranked in hell. And the disciples couldn't cast this demon out. Now, Jesus didn't refer to this as a prince demon. Jesus simply said this kind. So the ranks of hell are further broken down in kind, and those kinds vary in power. Now, the Bible also says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 through 45, Jesus says, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through dry places seeking rest, but finds none. Then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then it goes and brings with itself seven other spirits more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first, so shall it be with this evil generation. Now, first of all, it says, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through dry places seeking rest. Now, the scripture here is talking about, um, I believe, earthly deserts. So it's basically saying that demonic beings travel the earth when they're expelled from an individual. When the demon is cast out of a man, it goes around the earth looking for rest. Where does it rest? It rests in its host. It re Demons are parasites. They find rest and life and strength in the possession of human bodies. Remember, we talked about this last week too, that demons are very uncomfortable outside of a physical body, and they need a physical body to have that strength. And so they grow tired when they're outside of a body, and they go through the earth seeking. Then the scripture says, then it says, I will return to my house from which I came. Demonic beings are sentient. They can think for themselves. They can plan for themselves. They can observe for themselves. They decide what they do. So while Satan has an overall plan and the prince demons enact that plan in their regions and the different kinds of demons ranked within that category or in that region or in that geography, all the way from the prince down to the least powerful demons, when they work together, it creates the entire system, the power of hell. And so this demonic being, no matter where it's ranked in that system, was able to say, I will. In other words, it can think for itself. It decides. So the decisions start on the large scale. And as they move down in the ranks, the demonic beings take responsibility for their task, just like in any other system. Some Leadership micromanages, but for the most part, most systems allow for decisions to be made even within the lower ranks. So demonic beings in your life make decisions and observations concerning you. And while they not, may not always be receiving orders from the top, they're observing, they're watching. Just as we see this demon, it says, I will return to my house. It's very possessive. It considers that his home. And when it comes, it finds, it finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Demonic beings can only fill what is empty. That's why believers who are filled with the Holy Spirit cannot be demon-possessed. That'll be addressed in a later lesson. Then it goes, and it brings with itself seven other spirits more evil than itself. Now we see here that demons strategize. It says, I will. 
demons cooperate. It calls other demons to itself. But then we see, just very subtly here mentioned, that it calls spirits more evil than itself. So not only is it powers and principalities and darkness in the earth and spiritual wickedness in high places and the prince of princes, Satan, and the prince demons who rule over principalities and again, all of the rankings broken down by kinds, but we also see that some demons are more evil than others. So it's broken down by all of those systems and categories and in addition to all of those, there are some more evil. So because they're more evil, they're of a different rank. So kinds and some are more evil. And we've gone over, I believe, a lot of these details that are important. And there's a lot more that I want to get into. But you can get my book, um, 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. This is where all the teachings on, on, uh, that I'm doing as far as on demons goes are coming from this book, 25 Truths About Demons and Spiritual Warfare. If you're watching this video before October 4th, 2016, then you can pre-order the book and pre-orders only from our ministry come signed and with free shipping. If you get them from Amazon or Barnes and Noble, it is, it's not signed and they, they might charge you for shipping. I don't know how they work. But if you order from our ministry, davidhernandezministries.com slash shop, you order from our ministry, you're going to get it signed and shipped for free. Now, I want to talk to you real quickly um, before I pray about the different kinds of demons that are named in the Bible. Um, and this I'm going to go over very quickly. I want to give you as much information on these lessons as possible, but most of the information is going to be in this book. There's still, even talking about the rankings, there's a lot of stuff that I left out, a lot of little details that you would appreciate. But we see, for example, Apollyon in Revelation chapter 9. We see seducing spirits in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. These are demonic spirits that seduce people away from the faith. Um, in Hosea chapter 5, verse 4, they're called spirit of whoredoms. Um, spirits of infirmity in Luke chapter 13, verse 11. Demons that cause sickness. There's miracle working spirits, such as in Revelation chapter 16, verse 14. Uh, these demonic spirits perform miraculous acts in order to persuade people from the faith. Uh, there's spirits of divination in Acts chapter 16, verse 16. These demonic spirits uh, find their influence through the occult. There's uh, in Malachi chapter 3, verse 11, a spirit called the devourer, which attacks your finances. And there's much, much, much more. But again, uh, you can take a look at all of that. There's more about it in the book. I want to pray with you now that God would touch your life and that God would himself fill you with wisdom and revelation and boldness so that you can move against the powers of hell. I want to pray that God would give you not a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for that one watching right now who's filled with your authority, who's filled with your power. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you would raise that one watching, that they would be one who would come against the forces of darkness. I want you to say this. I want you to say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for my authority. Make me a warrior in the spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I really believe that God wants to make warriors in the spirit. People who specialize in conquering the forces of darkness, and he's going to do that with you. I'm going to, right now, read your comments, but first I want to welcome the new members of Spirit Church. These are those of you who joined our Spirit family in the last week. We love you. We are praying for you. We thank you for joining us, and we're happy to have you a part of the Spirit family. Those are names from different parts of the world and the nation. And so if you'd like information on how you can join the Spirit family, go ahead and click on the link that's just about to appear over my head. If you're not watching this on YouTube, that means that link's not going to appear overhead. Instead, use the information at the bottom of the screen to manually find how you can become a member of Spirit Church. The sign-up is quick, it's easy, it's free, and then you'll receive weekly emails from us every week on a Sunday. I believe we send it at 7 a.m. every Sunday. You get your weekly teaching, and there's worship, there's teaching, and I know you really enjoy that. 
I want to ask those of you who are Spirit Church members, please sign up to our automatic giving plan. You're not obligated to do so, but if Spirit Church is considered your church, sign up for the automatic giving plan to give your tithes and offerings automatically. It helps us plan, and that planning helps us to be more efficient with your giving. If you have another church that's your home church and Spirit Church is a supplemental ministry and you're still a member of Spirit Church though, we ask you, if Spirit Church is not your main church, to still sign up but become a $30 a month partner and that will help us a lot. Now to your comments. This first comment is from Emmy and these comments that I'm reading are from last week's teaching, The Origins of Demons. Thank you for the deeper things you preach. God bless you. Well, we at Spirit Church on Encounter TV love to get into the deeper things of God, and we love to present the deeper things of God in a simple way so that you can apply it to your life. And Messenger writes, this teaching is excellent. For some time, I realized that the traditional teaching that demons and fallen angels were the same thing had serious loopholes biblically. They have very different traits. Well, that's true. Demons and fallen angels are very different beings when you look at it in the scripture. And we've had some people who actually disagreed, and that's okay. Doc Radio writes, I love you so much, and you have taught me so much. However, on this topic, you made an attempt to describe a spiritual nature of spiritual beings, which simply isn't possible for any mortal man to do. I agree with you to some extent that we won't fully comprehend or appreciate it, Doc. However, the Bible does give us revelation, and it is through revelation of the Word that we have all the understanding that we need, at least for this side of things. ECM7 writes, Thanks, David, for keeping us on track about the difference between angels and demons. It helped me pay attention to the Scripture more and what it says about them. But what about the difference between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2, where first God created the world, and then all of a sudden there was no form? Now, what this person is referring to is something called the gap theory. Now, the gap theory was first presented at least popularly in 1814, and I believe it was created to accommodate the teachings of evolution and expand uh, for the old earth view. Now, you don't have to hold to the gap theory in order to believe the Bible and reconcile the Bible with an old earth worldview. However, some people do this. So what the gap theory says is that between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2, there was a long period of time that took place. Now, even though there's no indication for this in the Bible, and this person who brought it up, you didn't see their full comment. They're not being argumentative. And by the way, we dialogue all of the time. So don't mistake discussion for argument. We're not arguing, we're discussing. And this person raised a very good point, which is why I wanted to bring it up here. Because I have to be honest with you, there are some people, some solid theologians who believe that there is a gap between Genesis 1-1 and Genesis 1-2. And some believe that's where Satan fell and that there was something, even believe that there was a whole race of humans before Adam and Eve. I don't believe that. And I don't believe there was a gap there. They say, well, the, the, the earth was formless and, and void. But that, I think in the Hebrew, I forget the word for it, but I know that in the Hebrew, that simply means it wasn't formed yet. Um, but the reason I don't believe in the gap theory is number one in Romans chapter five, verse 12, the scripture says, wherefore as by one man sin entered into the world and died by death sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. So the gap theory, if you believe it, places death before sin, but nothing could have died before sin entered the world. So if you're saying that in the earth, there was another world that was created, another civilization that was destroyed. And then between Genesis 1, 1 and 1, 2, there's all this time that passes. Then you're putting death before sin. Number two, I don't believe in the gap theory and I don't believe Satan fell there. And you don't need it. A lot of people believe in the gap theory also to accommodate the fall of Satan. But the scripture tells us that Satan had to have fallen after the creation of man. Why? Because when God created everything, he said it is good. In other words, it is good. It is complete. It is whole. It is without defect. Now, God would not have looked upon a creation that was built upon a fallen civilization with a fallen creation dwelling in the earth and running around in a fallen state. He would not have done that and he would not have called it good if it were so. Number three, Satan spent some time in the Garden of Eden as we read in Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 13, which says, you were in Eden, the Garden of God. So for those three reasons and for many more, I don't believe in the gap theory. However, if you do believe the gap theory, we can still be friends. We can still be family in Christ. We agree to disagree on many things, but one thing we all agree upon is there's only one way to heaven, and his name is Jesus. So those are my thoughts on that. Thank you, ECM7, for bringing that up. I was hoping somebody would because I wanted to address this. Here we go from Jomo7384. This is a great teaching. Although a question arises, 
Was Goliath a Nephilim after the flood? I don't think so. I don't really think that Goliath could have been a Nephilim because Nephilim were destroyed in the flood and the only people who survived were Noah and his family. And that's my answer for that anyway. Chris writes, 10 years ago, I tried to teach on this same teaching and I was tremendously persecuted at the time. This is not a new teaching. It has been around for a long time, but it was not received by many Christians. Well, that's it for the comments. A special shout out to Joshua Kelly, who wrote in a question to me last week about Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. And I told you I would get to that uh, question. Hopefully this lesson answered some of those questions that you had regarding that main text that we used here on Spirit Church. Now I'm going to close here, but I want to talk to you for a second. And I'll make this quick, but I need your help. We want to open a miracle center in Southern California where I can hold weekly meetings, house the television production, welcome in a studio audience, and hold all of our administrative offices. We also want a place where we can open up a prayer center 24-7. I've talked about this on past episodes of Spirit Church, but I need your help. Not only do we want to open this center, but we want to expand our reach and do more for the gospel than ever before. You love this ministry. You know this ministry. You know we're all about souls, and we want to win people to Jesus. This is that something that you can do to change the world. I'm asking you to become a $30 a month partner today. Don't wait till next week. Don't wait for tomorrow. Sign up right now. We need 1,000 new $30 a month partners to go to the next phase of ministry, which includes this Miracle Center in Southern California. So go ahead and sign up today. We need a thousand new $30 a month supporters. If everyone who watches what I'm saying right now signs up, we'll have what we need and we can get the center up and running in just a matter of a couple months once we get the full income that we need. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church. I'm David Diga Hernandez. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Hey fam, Stephen Moctezuma here. I want to encourage you to subscribe to our channel and to share our content. I hope you're enjoying all the content that we're sending your way. In addition to David's teachings and ministry videos, you can also join me on my worship playlist where I release a brand new video every week. Thank you guys so much for watching Encounter TV. God bless.